welcome to So Help Me. This is a show where we help the beginning sewer learn, learn some, some fun sewing, sewing techniques. techniques. That wasn't even scripted. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my daughter. She's going to be assisting today. I am not Devon Garden. She is not Devon Garden. I have Gardner. not been Devon Garden this whole time. She is Libby. Thank you. Say hi, Libby. Hi, Libby. <laughs> So today we're going to talk about something a little bit more difficult than what we have done in the past. I can make a really good pillow. Is this more difficult? Yes, it is. Oh, darn. <laughs> it is an heirloom type napkin with mitered corners. What if you don't use napkins? You should use napkins. Oh. <laughs> I don't really use them that often. Maybe that's why you got that. Hey. <laughs> You're going to have a bruise by the end of the show, aren't you? Okay. <laughs> so here is our sample of our heirloom napkin. What by does heirloom mean? Heirloom means, well, it depends on who you're talking to. If it's sewing, usually it has to do with something that, um, well, is passed down from generation to generation, but also it's a certain type of stitching. It's um, it's more fancy, more airy. Airy, okay. It's more fancy. It's a little bit old world, but we do all that stuff on the sewing machine instead of by hand. Oh, well, that's convenient. Yeah, it goes well, whole maybe lot I'll faster. Use a napkin. Hey, but we also miter the corners. Okay. That sounds difficult. Well, it's not really. Do you have to miter a pillow? No. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm good at pillows. <laughs> you are so good at pillows. That's what I do. <laughs> okay, so um, the first thing I want to do is talk about the different uh, types of stitches that you can use in heirloom sewing. Um, and then we'll talk about supplies, okay? And samples. And samples, yeah. I should probably, well, no, we'll do that next. We'll do, we'll talk about the stitches first. I'm sorry. Here we go. Let's talk about these stitches right here. There is a, a several different stitches that you can use on your machine. This right here, this one right here, is actually just a zigzag stitch. And the zigzag stitch, this is a, um, a real fine fabric. And when you do heirloom stitching, you use a wing needle. A wing needle has wings on it. It does not fly away. Oh! It has wings on it. And it's supposed to make holes. What? Those holes what are, are... What are the wings? They're on the needle. Should I take it out? Yeah. Okay. See? Ooh. Ooh. That looks painful. It does. Well, yeah, that would be painful if you got a shot with it. Come here, Libs. <laughs> So there you go. That's a wide needle. That it's looks got painful. wings on. You can see those wings. That's a good shot right there. Good that, job. That looks very painful. Okay. You know what? Can you time me? Please. Sure. Okay. So there's your wing needle. It's supposed to make holes. This is what you want to do. On a regular zigzag on a lightweight fabric, it's going to make a small hole, not a really big hole. And on a linen, which is what I like to make um, the napkins out of, it doesn't really make that big of a hole at all, just a regular zigzag. However, when you go to, let's go to this one right up here. When you go to a reinforced zigzag, now this is what that stitch is gonna look like on your machine. This is a sample, to have three stitches going this way and this way, and what it does, it goes forwards, backwards, forwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, forwards, backwards, forwards. And if you look over here, you can see the holes that it makes. So if that wing needle goes back in the same hole about, oh, three, maybe four times, you're going to get a hole, which is what you want. And if you look here, you can see that on, even on the linen, the, three, the uh, reinforced zigzag is going to give you holes. Another stitch that I like to use is kind of called the box stitch. 
This one will look like this on your machine. And this is what it looks like on a lightweight fabric. See how what beautiful holes it makes? That's so what you want. Heirloom stitching is holy. With the wing needle it is, yes. Oh. It's very special. Holy with wings. Yes. <laughs> and here is the box stitch done on linen. Oh. No and holes. no, just a little hole. Yeah, yeah, you got holes. That's why I got it on this dark fabric. If I well oh. Can't, you can see the holes now if I hold it up a little bit. Yeah. Got that? Okay. The other one that I want to show you is right down here. This is actually called an entredo stitch. Can you see that? Uh, no. Entredo. Entredo is a French hand sewing technique. Sounds like a Harry Potter spell. <laughs> it does, does it? <laughs> but right here, you can see this does a beautiful job of making holes in the center. You've probably bought maybe Entredeau before. Have you ever seen like pillowcases uh -huh. with the holes? That's Entredeau. Well, in the picture it looks more like triangles. But well, this is what it will it, look it like. more like X's. Yeah, this is what it will look like. The picture looks like on your machine. Uh -huh. This is what it looks like stitched out on fabric. That's why I drew it out. It's not really a very good drawing. <laughs> I see X's. That's, well, sort of, kind of, yeah. Okay. And this is the stitch we're going to be using on okay. our napkins. And then one more that I like to talk about is the snowflake stitch, or some people call it the flower stitch. I kind of oh. like this one, too. On this, on this lightweight fabric, it does a beautiful job of giving you holes. It looks kind of lacy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can make your own lace with oh. decorative stitches on your sewing machine. That also sounds slightly terrifying. No, it's not. It's fun, 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 fun. Oh, can we have another DVD on that? Certainly. Okay, good. Okay, so those are the different stitches that you can use on your sewing machine. If all you have is the reinforced zigzag, that's fine. You can use that. Play with your stitch length, play with your stitch width, and see what looks best to you. Not on your finished project. No. <laughs> Start on a sample first. Okay, so we talked about the wing needle. You know that you have to have a wing needle. Um, you also need a different kind of thread. I prefer actually either a 60 weight thread, which is a very lightweight thread. That sounds heavy. Nope, 60 weight. Actually, as you go up in number, you're going down in size. I know that's counterintuitive. Hey, I didn't make the rules. That's just what they do. It's like golf. Really yeah. stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like oh, the lower the score, the better off you are. Hmm. So a 60 weight thread, and I bet you if I put this on my sample here, you'll be able to see maybe the difference. So there's your 60 weight thread, and here's your regular sewing thread. Ah, you can see the difference. This hmm. is your 60 weight. It's lighter and finer. And that's the reason they, that they use that is because it's not going to fill up the hole as much. Give you a bigger hole. Mm. This is going to fill up the hole. I also like to use a, a standard 50 weight embroidery thread too. Oh, hello. Come here you stinker. There we go. A standard 50 weight embroidery thread will also give you a little bit bigger holes than your standard sewing thread. What is standard th sewing thread? Standard sewing thread? Uh, what weight? Usually it's around uh, 40, 50. There's hmm. different companies kind of have different ways of defining what their weight is. Huh. I know. Kind of sounds like people. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. So you're going to need a bobbin of the same stuff and your wing needle. Okay. Let's go over the supplies that we have to have for that. Uh, uh oh, can we see that? Here we go. Okay, so we talked about the wing needle, right? We talked about the 60 weight thread. Color is same color as your fabric. What if you don't want it? Well, you can change the color if you want to, but then the holes don't show up as big because if you have the same color thread as you do your fabric you'll see your holes more 
Oh. Otherwise, you'll see your thread more. That makes sense. That's a good question. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Bobbin of the same stuff. And I like to use a linen fabric. And I like to use 100% linen. And I usually cut them to, into 16 by 16 inch squares. And you also should have a seam gauge. This is just your standard run of the bill seam gauge. Probably about 99 cents for this guy. But I use them all the time. I love she does. them. I stab myself with them when I pick <laughs> them up. I stab her too. And any entredeau stitch on your sewing machine and iron activated adhesive cut into quarter inch strips. And regular sewing thread for mitering your corners. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about. Um, how to get on straight of grain with your with your fabric. On a linen, it's actually real easy to get on straight of grain. Sounds difficult. If you have a rotary cutter and mat, that's gonna go so much faster and so much easier. You just lay your square ruler down on there and rent, 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 you know, try and cut them on the grain as best you can. But if you want to be really anal about it, you can. Precise. Precise about it. Precise. That's a better word. We are precise yes. here. Yes, precise. Okay. You can pull a thread. And by pulling a thread, if you look down at the sample here, oh boy. Hey, can you see right here? I got a spot. There. What you're going to do is grab one of those threads and pull it out. And that's going to give you straight on the grain. I'm going to lay this down and move this over because I have, on this side, I have my thread. And I'm going to pull. And you just grab it and pull it out. And like there you that's go. Something that you should not do. Well, you don't want to do that, but what you you're giving yourself something to follow. Oh. So this would be this so would be So that's what you're cutting on with the scissors. Yes. Oh, I understand. <laughs> I understand. I'm sorry about that. Didn't I make that clear? That's why she's here cuz a lot of times I don't make it clear. Cuz I'm the dimwit that doesn't No, you're it. not. Stop that. Okay. So, pulling your thread. You can also do that on a fabric. This is also a linen. This one's um, a little bit stiffer. That other piece was washed, so that one's going to be easier to do. And I would starch these guys. If you're going to do heirloom stitching on them, starch the schnot out of them. Because otherwise Kay? they crinkle. Yes. So here again, this one's going to be a little bit more difficult to pull, but all you do, and if it breaks, that's okay. Get your pin out, get a pin out, and pull it back out again. And you can see, there's my pulled thread right there. And that gives me right on the straight of grain. So that's how you get on the straight of grain. Okay, now the next thing that we're going to talk about is actually how to do the mitered corners. And I'm going to show you my sample here, my sample of mitered corners. This is actually sewn right here. Hmm. So you don't have to fold it and fold it and try and shove all that stuff in there. It's actually sewn underneath there. Okay? So here's how we do that. Can I keep this for a napkin? Certainly. I'm doing a really big miter right here. <laughs> this one's huge. Oh. <laughs> but you can do this any size. You can, you know, if you want to make placemats or something like that, you can do that too. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is fold miter. up. <laughs> you're going to fold up your hem on one side. And you're going to fold up your hem on the other side. And you notice you've got this overlap here. Right? Yes. <laughs> the flying nun. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to open this up. And we're going to open this up. And then I'm going to 
I got my, I don't know if you guys, oh, you can see that. See my folded lines right there? That's yes, what I want. I see them. Cool. I'm going to fold this on the diagonal, matching up this folded line to this folded line. Matching that up. This sounds difficult. It no, sounds it's difficult. not. It's not difficult at all. I think you've taught me how to do this about four times. <laughs> and now I'm right on the diagonal here. Okay? So what I need to do is I need to sew from here to here. And if I just take this guy, well, let me flip this over and it'll be easier for you to see. If I just take this guy and fold him over, look at that. It gives me a wonderful diagonal to sew on. Hmm. So I'm just going to mark that. Ooh, try and keep it straight. Here, I'm going to get my little, my little ruler there. He's bad or There we go. Okay. Now, if I sew on that line right there, trim that off, you can see that it's going to miter right where it's supposed to. Okay? So miter is corner. Miter, yes. Mm -hmm. So I have this big sample. Now I have a small sample, which we are actually going to do. Okay? I don't have to do it, do I? No. Okay, good. So I'm going to sew that right down there. There's my, can you see that line? You might want to zoom in there. There we go. So I folded this piece over and I got my line right there and that's the line I'm going to sew on. And you whack the rest off, right? Mm-hmm. And this is where I did. I sewed. Okay, so I sewed right along there. Okay, now I'm going to trim it with my yucky scissors and I'm going to yeah, kind of bump that off too. Now when you turn this, here's how I want you to do it. I want you to stick your index finger in there. Open this up, grab it with your thumb that you've opened up and flip. And there you have your perfect mitered corn. See how easy that was? Woohoo! Seems so scary. Now. See? All righty. So now you know how to miter those corners. That was fun, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Okay. Then once you've got those corners mitered. You are going to take your iron adhesive and jam it up in there. Oh, that sounds pleasant. And iron it so that this is kind of stiff right here. Huh. Now, you don't want it to be stiff right on the edge because you want those fibers to move. And I need that wing needle in there. Uh -oh. Can you put that in there? And that's why I got... This is another little handy dandy thing. If you have trouble getting needles in your machine, this is a little rubber disc. Have you ever had those rubber, well, maybe not you. Well, maybe you guys out there. You've had those big rubber discs they, that open up jars for you. This oh, yeah. is a needle size one because it's kind of hard to get that up in there. So I use that to get it up in there. And flat side to the back. Okay, so you're going to take your, um, your iron-on adhesive and you're going to shove it underneath there and iron that in place. And now everything is going to be nice and snug and held in place. So you can see I don't have this edge done, but I do have it in at the beginning part there. This is still kind of hanging out there because if I, if I make this stiff, with my iron-on adhesive. It's not going to pull the fibers like I want it to. I feel like I'm not doing this right. Can you get it? Well, I don't think the gripper will help. <laughs> you don't think the gripper? Okay. We're going to use the entre stitch 
put just right. stitch number 35 on my machine and you can use whichever stitch you want. Remember, if you have the wing needle in, you're gonna be able to use any stitch basically that goes in the same hole three, preferably four times. Six! Now we gotta, oh gosh, do you have your, I don't have my glasses on. Do you have your glasses? Cause I can't, we can't use the needle threader with this. Oh. I'm going to hurt you. Oh, I, I got it. Ooh. No, you don't. <laughs> Thing I have my gigantor nails on. <laughs> oh, look at that. First try. <gasps> Yay! Now, I have yellow embroidery thread in the machine, but I do have the 60 weight bobbin thread in there. So I'm going to choose stitch number 35. Oh. And I just got to talk while we get down to stitch number 35. Oh, 36. 35. Okay, there we go. You always, 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 always want to do this on a sample before you do it on your nice nappy kin that you just made. So, I'm going to do it on my sample. And the edge of my hem is going to be right in the center of the foot. So my hem, the edge of my hem is going to be right, it's going to come out right here, right at the center of the foot. Okay? So, let's see what happens. Eh, let's find the foot control. Here we go. We got it. Okay. You want to sew slowly and consistently. You don't want to sew, boom, 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 boom. that's bad. Well, because there's a chance of breaking the thread, you're going back in that same hole a lot of different times. So you don't want to break your thread. And yeah, and then you got to start all over again. Ooh. Not a good time. But what we're doing is we're hemming and we're making the entredeau stitch all at the same time. Huh. Cool, huh? That's convenient. Mm hmm. And I guess you could do it. I mean, it doesn't look bad in that yellow thread. I told if, you. If we did the embroidery in yellow, too, that would be pretty. Huh, I had a good idea. You okay. always have good ideas. I know. You <laughs> never listen to me. I do. Never All the time. time. I don't know what you're talking about. Are you sew our sample, too? Okay. Can you see that stitch? How it gives you a nice does a beautiful, that's a beautiful job. Gives you beautiful holes in there. Now the, it's, it's, it's slightly, slightly puckered, that's okay. It'll iron right out. Believe me, I've done this enough times, it'll iron right out. And that's what's nice about the linen too. 100% cotton will work, but linen actually works a little bit better. Okay, do you have any questions? I don't think so. No. I think I've asked my questions. Okay. Did we go over everything? I think we did. What is this for? Oh, that was to show you a sample of, you don't have to have a small little miter. You can have a larger miter. It's kind of pretty. It looks like a tablecloth. Or you could use it as a doily, too. It doesn't have to be napkins. That would be pretty as a doily. Or, <laughs> and this or a headdress. What is this for? That, oh, I can show that too. That was, um, that's just a sample of the really lightweight fabric. This is going to give you holes. That's really going to give you holes. Why, why is this curly? Because I ripped it. This stuff you do have to kind of hold taunt and sew even a little bit slower. Let's see if we can get this going. Yeah, you don't want to sew real fast on this stuff because sometimes your feed teeth, even on that very, very lightweight fabric, your feed teeth can do a little bit of damage too. And you can see how the machine is sewing backwards and forwards. So let the machine feed. Don't be pulling on it because then your stitch isn't. What are you doing? 
<laughs> Keep stitching. Because then your stitch isn't going to look real good. I'm trying to hold this down here. There we go. There you can see. It's got... Can you see that? That gives you some nice... Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. Gives you some nice holes. It, get, it does give you bigger holes on this lightweight stuff. Let's see if we can get a close up of that. Do I have dark? This is the only place I have dark. There we go. Okay. Gives you some nice holes there. And that's what it looks like on this light, lightweight stuff. You have to be a little bit more careful with that. Now, you know what? What you're doing there, you could actually do that and then do your stitching right here and then unravel it up to that point. Should you ravel first or, or unravel? You should pull a thread. First. For this kind of stuff, you absolutely have to pull a thread and then do your stitching down that pulled thread and then unravel. Good idea, Libs. Thanks, Philippa. <laughs> so we hope you've enjoyed um, our time together, and we hope you try some heirloom stitchings with <laughs> with doing mitered corners. Apply that to like everything. You can do mitered corners on tablecloths, Pillows. anything, pillows, anything you want. Okay. And remember, you can reach me at www.stitchwoman.com. And remember. Keep looking up. Bye-bye.